This is another case that has to be shared from a historical point of view. It deals with the first person in the world to be executed by the electric chair. Now that's not the only thing, it actually went wrong, which is a very funny in a way. I mean, it sounds morbid if I say it like that, but we're dealing with uh, crazy people anyway, so they deserve their punishment. And that's why it's kind of funny that it goes wrong. At least I think so. But it's at the same time also very, very bad. And since it was the first person to be executed, I guess it explains a lot. They had to perfect the method. Now today I wanted to narrate the details they have on the wikis for you, so you can hear about it for yourself. It concerns the person called William Kemmler. He was an American peddler, alcoholic and murderer, who in 1890 became the first person in the world to be executed by electric chair. He was convicted of murdering Matilda Ziegler, his common-law wife, two years earlier. Although electrocution had previously been successfully used to kill a horse, Kemmler's execution did not go so smoothly. Now, I also find that part pretty funny. It had been successfully used to kill a horse. So now let's use it on human beings as well, as a death penalty. Why not? If it works on animals, might as well work on humans. So let's go over the details. First they go over his early life, and it stated the following. William Kemmler was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1860. Both of his parents were immigrants from Germany, and they were alcoholics. After dropping out of school at age 10, having learned neither how to read nor write, Kemmler worked in his father's butcher shop. His father would die from an infection that he received after a drunken brawl, and his mother from complications of alcoholism. In the late 1870s, Kemmler was reportedly slender, with dark brown hair. He spoke both English and German. After the passing of his parents, he went into the peddling business and earned enough money to buy a horse and cart. At this point, however, he was also becoming a heavy drinker. In one episode involving him and his friends, after a series of drunken binges, he said he could jump his horse and cart over an 8-foot fence, with the cart attached to the horse. Unsurprisingly, the attempt was a failure, and his cart and goods were destroyed in the incident. He was known to friends as Philadelphia Billy, and his drunken binges were very well known around the saloons in his Buffalo neighborhood. And I went on to write concerning the murder, trial and appeals. He was the first person executed by the electric chair. The New York Times provided a summary of what occurred as follows. William Kemmler was a vegetable peddler in the slums of Buffalo, New York, an alcoholic on March 29, 1888. He was recovering from a drinking binge the night before when he became enraged with his girlfriend. Tilly Ziegler, he accused her of stealing from him and preparing to run away with a friend of his. When the argument reached a peak, Kemmler calmly went to the barn, grabbed a hatchet and returned to the house. He struck Tilly, repeatedly killing her. He then went to a neighbor's house and announced he had just murdered his girlfriend. That same day, he was accused of the murder of Matilda, his common-law wife, who had been killed with a hatchet. Kemmler's resulting murder trial proceeded quickly. He was convicted of first-degree murder on May 10th. Three days later, he was sentenced to death destined to be the first person executed in an electric chair under New York's new execution law, replacing hanging with electrocution. A chair was ready at the Auburn State Prison. However, the leading developers of electrical power, including George Westinghouse, did not want to see their new product used in this manner. A lawyer filed an appeal claiming the electric chair violated the Eighth Amendment's prohibition of cruel and unusual punishment. On January 1st, 1888, New York had instituted death by electrocution, the first such a law ever. After Kemmler's conviction, it was determined that a sentence was to be carried out at a New York urban prison via the new electric chair, a device invented in 1881 by Buffalo, New York dentist Alfred Southwick. After nine years of development and legislation, the chair was considered ready for use. Kemmler's lawyers appealed, arguing that electrocution was a cruel and unusual punishment. The plan to carry out Kemmler's execution via electric chair drew the situation into the ACDC war of currents between George Westinghouse, the largest supplier of alternating current equipment, and Thomas Edison, whose company ran its equipment on direct current. The alternating current that powered the electric chair 
a current standard adopted by a committee after a demonstration performed at Edison's laboratory by NTAC activist Howard P. Brown, and showing AC's lethal rates was supplied by a Westinghouse generator surreptitiously acquired by Brown. This led to Westinghouse trying to stop what seemed to be Brown and Edison's attempt to try to portray the AC used in Westinghouse electrical system as the deadly executioner's current, supporting Kemmler's appeal by hiring lawyer W. Borg Cochran to represent him. The appeal failed on October 9th, 1889, and the US Supreme Court turned down the case on the grounds that there was no cruel and unusual punishment in death by electrocution. Let's switch to a picture on the screen, or at least more of a sketch concerning this electrocution that kind of went wrong, and we're gonna find out what exactly went wrong in a bit. On the morning of his execution, August 6th, 1890, Kemmler was awakened at 5 a.m. He dressed quickly and put on a suit, necktie, and white shirt. After breakfast and some prayer, the top of his head was shaved at 6.38 a.m. Kemmler entered the execution room and Warden Charles Durston presented Kemmler to the 17 witnesses in attendance. He looked at the chair and said, Gentlemen, I wish you all good luck. I believe I'm going to a good place and I'm ready to go. Witnesses remarked that Kemmler was composed at his execution. He did not scream, cry or resist in any way. He sat down on the chair but was ordered to get up by the warden so a hole could be cut in his suit through which a second electrical lead could be attached. This was done and Kemmler sat down again. He was strapped to the chair, his face was covered and the metal restraint put on his bare head. He said, take it easy and do it properly. I'm in no hurry. Durston replied, goodbye William, and ordered the switch thrown. The generator was charged with 1000 volts, which was thought to be adequate to induce quick unconsciousness and cardiac arrest. The chair had already been thoroughly tested, a horse had been electrocuted the day before. Current was passed through Kemmler for 17 seconds. The power was turned off and Kemmler was declared dead by Edward Charles Spitzka. Witnesses noticed Kemmler was still breathing. The attending physicians Spitzka and Carlos Frederick MacDonald came forward to examine Kemmler. After confirming he was still alive, Spitzka reportedly called out have the current turned on again, quick, no delay. In the second attempt, Kemmler was shocked with 2000 volts. Blood vessels under the skin ruptured and bled, and some witnesses erroneously claimed his body caught fire. The New York Times reported instead that an awful odor began to permeate the death chamber, and then, as though the cap, the climax of his fearful sight, it was seen that the hair under and around the electrode on the head and flesh under and around the electrode at the base of the spine was singeing. The stench was unbearable. Upon autopsy, the doctors had found the blood vessels under the cap of the skull had carbonized and the top of the brain had actually hardened. Witnesses reported the smell of burning flesh and several nauseated spectators tried to leave the room. The killing took approximately 8 minutes. The competitive newspaper reporters covering the Kemmler execution jumped on the abnormalities as each newspaper source tried to outdo each other with sensational headlines and reports. A reporter who witnessed it all said it was an awful spectacle, far worse than hanging. Westinghouse later commented they would have done better using an axe. That was the end of the article. So as you could hear, the death sentence isn't always as straightforward as it seems. Now even in this day and age it could still potentially happen if something malfunctions, if equipment malfunctions for the electric chair or even other ways. I don't know if with the uh, needle injection if it happens then because you know technically they prepare that very very specifically the ingredients that go into those needles and into your veins to make sure the person will be dead. So I think that's more uncommon for it to ever happen there, but with equipment like an electric chair, it isn't actually that strange for it to fail a couple of times here and there. Which is absolutely gruesome, but then again, I guess this guy deserved it in a way. He isn't an innocent person, right? If it was a totally innocent person that was just randomly grabbed and then executed in this way, and then the execution also went completely wrong, 
Well then, we would feel very sorry for that person to have to go through such torture and or heinous fucking uh, things, you know? Obviously. But with this guy, he wasn't innocent, but it's still kind of funny how it... He was like the guinea pig. He, they, they had to test how it worked on a human being through him, and then they probably learned to do better on future convicts who also got executed in this manner. Although I do remember previous cases in the past where these stories happened where the electric chair just didn't work properly. I think this happened a couple of times with even famous criminals in the last decades. I can't recall any off the top of my head, it's just a vague memory I have concerning this death penalty. And it's absolutely hilarious for these crazy people to die like that. Anyways, with that being said, dear viewer, have sweet dreams.